Hey everyone, it's your teacher, Miss Almadi. I am here in our classroom on the weekend getting ready to read to you for this week's Listening Center. And I'm sure, as you already know, that we've got a lot of really great books that we're studying this week. Give me just a second to grab them. All right, guys, this week we are learning all about worms. And we're using this book, Earthworms, to learn all about their habitats and what they like to eat. And hold on, let me look for the table of contents to kind of get an idea what this book has in it. Where to find them, their body, like I said, what they eat or feeding, moving, tunneling, mating, hatching, the types of enemies they have, food for birds, worm wonders, and of course the glossary and the index. We're using this book to help us better understand about something that is real. And this type of book is a nonfiction book. And I'm sure you can tell by the cover and the text features that it has in it. And the fact that earthworms do exist and all of this information um, is true. And you know, there are so many good facts in here. So that's what we're learning about. And we're also comparing that with this book, Diary of a Worm. Now this book is an amazing story of a worm that is writing in his diary every day and he's kind of giving us a glimpse into his life and you know some of the things that he does is let's see let me find one that's really interesting oh he decided that he wanted to be like a spider and walk upside down i'm sure that doesn't happen in real life and let's see he is oh he has school and he got so hungry that he ate his homework also not true so you can kind of see the difference here this is about real um animals or worms and it is a non-fiction book and this is a fiction fake book about a worm that is writing in a diary which in and of itself is a pretty silly idea which is why you're going to like this book so much but today we're going to use the skills that we're learning to learn about turtles um this is a really great nonfiction book by Nat Geographic Kids. They have tons of really good nonfiction books. And it's a level one. I believe it is right around the third grade level, but it's a good one that we can read together. Before I open this book and we start diving in, I want to go over, again, what we're learning, why we're learning it, and how you know you're gonna know it. And so we want you to know and use various text features in first grade. And I'm gonna go over those as we're reading this amazing book. Why do I want you to know this? Well, text features help the reader find information and better understand the text. If you're gonna spend time reading about something that you're interested in, you wanna know how to use the book to best understand and gain as much information as possible. And you're gonna know that you know it because you're gonna be able to pick out these key text features. For example, you will know what a text feature is. It's a part of a book that helps you better understand the text. And it's done in such a way that our eyes are drawn to it. So for example, take a look at this page right here. And I can see right here it's saying turtle term. And it says webbed feet, feet with skin between the toes. The skin stretches out to look like a web. Hmm. That's an interesting text feature. And I just learned more about a turtle's feet, webbed feet. You'll be able to identify a key fact. So we can look through and find right here. Other turtles live on land. They are called tortoises. Because of that fi fact right there, I now can identify that turtles live in the water and tortoises live on land. That information really helps me understand the difference between turtles and tortoises. And you guys are gonna understand what information is and that's pretty much everything that we're reading in this book that is helping us gain understanding about what the book is about. And this um, main idea of this book is clearly all about turtles. You're also gonna learn about headings and 
I like these books because I think they highlight headings really well. And so let's find this. Do you see that big giant word and this word right here, keeping safe? That is the heading that's gonna tell us everything about this page. And this page, again, is telling us how a turtle uses its body to keep safe. And I like this as well because as you can see, there is a diagram on this page that gives us the parts of the turtle and they're highlighting it by pointing to it. And that's another example of a text feature. We're also going to look at the table of contents. This is so important if you're wanting to use a nonfiction book to get more information because this table of contents tells you where to find the information, where to look. Sometimes you don't have time to read an entire book in one sitting. You want to find a key piece of information. And let's pretend that I'm really, really fascinated about turtles and I want to find out um, what they eat. So I'm going to look at my table of contents right here. I can look at the top one and see that on page four, I can see that the heading is called Tons of Turtles. On page eight, it's Turtles and Tortoises. Keeping Safe is on page 12. Six Cool Facts About Turtles is on page 14. Crunch and Munch is on 16. Okay, that's what I wanna know about. I wanna know what they're eating. So if I want to know more about turtles and what they're eating, I'm gonna turn to page 16 and the heading is Crunch and Munch. So. I can use that table of contents to then find the key pieces of information that are gonna help me learn more about the turtles. And let's see. Perfect, crunch and munch. And right there it says, it's turtle lunchtime. Lots of foods are on the menu. And it even has these pictures here that really help us see exactly what they like to eat. We can see that they like to eat snails and <gasps> worms, what we're learning about. How neat. All right, and last but not least, I wanna share with you about the glossary. And that is found at the back of the book. Now, a glossary gives you key, um, vocabulary words and gives you the definitions of them. Words that we otherwise might not have known and we might need a little help understanding. And I like this book because it gives you a picture definition as well. So let me find it. Perfect. On the back page is the glossary and I can see here that, that in the table of contents it also says it's page 32. So turning to page 32, I can see this. All right, guys, I can see that egg tooth is an egg tooth. Hmm, I do need to learn about this. A sharp point on a baby's tur baby turtle's beak. Oh my gosh, look. This picture allows me to see that egg tooth. And I can even gain more from the picture about the color of the egg tooth. I can see more about the turtle's neck just from this picture, more than the words are telling me. So neat. Predator. An animal that hunts and eats other animals. Huh. So, turtles have other animals that hunt and eat them. And I can see that this bird right here is one of them. And they have evidence to prove it. There's a turtle in its beak. Awesome. All right, guys. So, let's dig into the book a little bit. And then I'm going to give you and your partner a chance to just explore and talk about the book. Finding key pieces of information and facts. All right, guys, so this book, again, is titled Turtles, and it is a nonfiction book. All right, opening it up, I again see that title page where it says Turtles, and it is written by Laura Marsh. Turning again, I see that table of contents that we discussed, and we're going to start right from the beginning. So turning it one more time should put me on table four. I see the heading, Tons of Turtles. All right, guys, let's dig in and start reading. I'm gonna try to hold it here so you guys can really see what we're reading. All right, finger on oceans. Oceans and lakes. 
deserts and forests, ponds and streams. Turtles live in many places. They live all over the world except in very cold areas. So we just learned some key information about where we can find turtles and where their habitats habitat is. And they can be found in oceans and lakes, deserts and forests and ponds and streams, as long as it's not very, very, very cold. All right, turn the page. Perfect. Now we're on page six. And I can see that they have some pictures and they have a little tiny caption. That caption is just words that tell you about the picture. And right now in these books, some of them are just gonna have one word. Sometimes you have a lot of text to go with the caption. For these, they're just identifying what types of animals these are. Alligator, lizard, snake, and a box turtle. All right, let's read page number seven by putting our finger on turtles. Turtles are reptiles. Alligators, lizards, and snakes are reptiles too. Reptiles have scaly skin and most reptiles lay eggs. Awesome. So now we have figured out the type of animal we are learning about and it is a reptile. And we know that reptiles have scaly skin and most of them lay eggs. I'm sure you remember this from when we were studying this in science. Go ahead and turn the page and you will see we are on page eight and page nine. Turtles and tortoises. We can see that there are some interesting text features. This is the one I talked to you about earlier, about webbed feet. I can see that this is a Florida cooter. This is a baby green sea turtle, and this is a loggerhead musk turtle. And this is the type of species that we can find. And there's so, so many more than this. And I'm sure they're gonna talk about that in this page because this page is titled Turtles and Tortoises. All right, let's put our finger on there and let's read together. There are more than 300 kinds of turtles. Many turtles live mostly in the water. These turtles have webbed feet or flippers to help them swim. Their shells are flatter than land turtles' shells are. Okay, so let's review what we've just read. And if you don't do this normally, you should. Reviewing what you've read helps you better understand and it's asking yourself questions about, okay, what have I just read? What do I understand? Am I missing anything? Do I remember what I've just read? So what we've just read is that there can be more, there are more than 300 kinds of turtles. And let's see, they, many of them live in the water. We know others live in, live on land. And we learned earlier that those are called tortoises. We know that turtles that live in the water have webbed feet or flippers to help them swim. And that if we're comparing them to a tortoise, a turtle and a tortoise, turtles shells are flatter than land turtles or tortoises shells are. So we can see um, something that makes them different. And something that's just a little fun for you that National Geographic puts in their books, if you look up here in the corner, question, what is a turtle's favorite song? Answer, jingle shells, jingle shells. That's funny. <laughs> All right, guys, turn the page again and we will be on page 10. We're gonna learn more about what the, more about turtles and tortoises. And I know this because there is not another heading on this page. So let's see what we have. Other turtles live on land. They are called tortoises. These turtles do not have webbed feet. They have stumpy legs for walking. Their shells are round and tall. I can see that the picture matches the text. Comparing it to the page right before, these turtles that live in water do have flatter shells compared to this round and tall shell of this tortoise. Specifically, we can look at its name. It is the leopard tortoise. And I can see, kind of see why comparing it to a leopard with those 
interesting marks. All right, let's turn the page to page number 12 and 13. All right, we can see that this is called Keeping Safe. Remember, um, I showed you this earlier with the diagram, but we're gonna really dive into this page. So let's go ahead and put our finger on turtles. Turtles walk slowly. They can't move quickly away from danger. So their bodies help protect them. And again, we can see the types we can see the parts of the body and the purpose of the part. Why do they have those parts? We know that animals live in certain places and have certain body parts to help them survive. Okay, so let's start right up at the top where it says, where it says shell. Look at that, S-H, Sh shell. Most turtles have a hard shell it protects the body like a helmet, protects your head. How cool. I'm sure some of you guys have that text to self connection. If you're playing football or any other sports um, or riding a bike, you wear a helmet to protect your head and this turtle has a shell that does a similar thing for its body. Go down and we can see that this is a black knobbed sawback turtle. We can look again and see shoots. I'm sorry, you know what? I pronounced that wrong. I would have thought that that was, nope, it doesn't have an H, it is scoots. And I can look right here and it says S-K-O-O-T-S in these parentheses. That tells me I need to pronounce it like this instead of how I would think it would normally be pronounced. Scoots are bony plates that protect some animals. Scoots, like the ones on, the, on a turtle shell, make it harder for a predator to eat the turtle. Man, I can imagine, I see those scoots up here, and if an animal was trying to bite into a turtle, that must be really com uncomfortable in its mouth, and it would probably you know, release its bite and say, you can go away, you're too hard to eat. Look down here, and we can see neck and legs. Many turtles can pull their neck and legs into their shell when danger is near. I noticed that in the first picture that their neck almost reminds me of like a turtleneck um, sweater that's kind of bunched up. It can take that neck and just pull it inside. Nostrils. A turtle has nostrils near the top of its beak. It can breathe with just the tip of its nose out of water. The rest of its body is hidden under water. Well, that's gotta be really helpful we don't want other animals to see this sweet little turtle. Not that we know it's sweet or not, but we don't want other animals to see this turtle and um, know that dinner is near. And so if their nostrils are the only thing sticking out of the water, it probably makes it hard to see. And last, let's go to beak. A turtle's beak can cause a nasty bite. This bite might scare a predator. Predator, away. All right, so that beak helps it as well defend itself. We're gonna actually stop here, guys, and you're gonna have about two minutes to just explore the rest of the book, learning from the different kinds of text features, maybe even showing off with your partner a little bit and saying, I know what this is called, this is a heading, and I can see this is a diagram, and if I turn all the way to the back, I see the glossary. And please, please, please feel free this week and the next to grab nonfiction books and show off to me. I wanna see what you know. Show me you know it. All right, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed reading with me and I hope you are enjoying your week in my class.